Hi, this is Paul, and today I'm going to show you how to create a hyperspace warp effect using BCC in After Effects. Hi, here I am in After Effects. You can see I've got nothing up my sleeve, and we're going to create an awesome warp from nothing. So I'm going to get right into it. New HD project and new title. The title is going to be the basis of my warp, and you can use whatever you want, a logo, a picture, whatever. Uh, you'll see how to do it from here. Okay, so here's our title. Looks very sci-fi-ish. Now let's create a solid and apply our particle emitter 3D effect. This is going to drive the whole thing, like warp drive. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay, so you can see it's doing just a bunch of little dots, and that's awesome. But let's make it even better and use the letters as the particles. So go into the particles group, change the particle shape to cards 3D. Change the image layer to warp, and there you go. You've got all these little cards with letters on them. Very small cards, so increase the size. Just big enough so you can see what you're working with here. We're going to make them bigger later, by the way, but for now, that's good. Uh, to organize these things, a lot of things we've got to change. Twirl down, transform particle, and change randomize orientation to zero. Still kind of chaotic, but it's like organized chaos now. Kind of a cool effect in its own right, but we want to make them a solid line. So next we go into the emitter group, change the direction to forward, and change the spread to zero. There we go. Hey, check it out. It's warping already. All right, tutorial's over. All right, now we're going to keep going. Uh, we don't want the particles to come at us on their own, actually. So we're going to turn down the particle speed to like nothing or 10, depending on how you want your end result to look. And we're going to get the motion by moving the particle emitter itself. So if I animate the position Z, so at frame 0, position Z 0, and about a second down into my timeline, or a second and a half, let's create another position Z that's really far away, like negative 15. And see how the letters just disappear. Let's hide our source text so we can see what's happening. So it's getting very far away from us, except for this one, which is straggling there. To keep the particles in a nice clear line, turn inertia from emitter down to zero. Okay, so now the particles are closer together as we would like. At this point, let us add an AE camera, something with a focal range of 35 or less. That's good. And now let's enable use comp camera. Okay, so the letters are even smaller now. At this point, let's turn on our original title and change the scale of the particles until they match the size of the actual letters. So I'm going to keep going, keep going. Don't worry, it's going to get pretty high. And there it is. Okay, so now the warp will line up nicely. And if you want to see something really cool, duplicate your source title to make a 3D version of it. You can hide the source now. And rotating around your scene, I'm sorry, it's impossible not to make that noise when doing a warp effect. And if you can do it without making that noise, then my hat is off to you, sir. Okay, so you get the idea. It's uh, gonna stream away from our source particle here. Okay, now let's reset the camera and make the particles look more streaky. So the first thing we're going to do is collapse particles and increase the particle count, or the birth rate, high enough so that you don't see an obvious edge uh, to the streaks. That's pretty good. Next, let's go back into particles group and change the color. Uh, white's boring, so let's do something like you know blue. And that's cool. Here we have kind of like a 3D looking text. And it's going to look even cooler once we change the blend mode from normal to literally any other setting. I like screen. So you can see that adds kind of an inherent glow to the trails. And to make it more varied, we're going to change the color mode from current color to gradient evolve. So now going into color gradient, going to manually change these, starting at white, 
but very quickly becoming a dark blue. And I do this because I think it looks best when your particles quickly get darker. Uh, if you don't do it this way, you'll have pretty much white particles the whole time until the very end and then it's too late. And there we go. Very cool. Now you don't have to use all these colors and in fact you can just load a preset but I wanted to do it the hard way. Alright so this could be your effect already but here's a few other things we're gonna change. We're gonna go into the fractal field group and increase the movement noise. So you can you can see what that does here. Uh, it's a little bit sharp so we're going to turn down the noise frequency to get nice broader motions. Now we can turn that up even more. And if you don't want it to have noise in every dimension, you can turn them down. For example, I don't want Z noise, so set that to zero. Better. And I want the noise to fade in more gradually. So this fade in noise option, I'm going to turn that up to like two. So now you can see the noise is much slower to come in, and in fact it doesn't even stay on for that long before the particles disappear. Alright, maybe even bigger, and uh, that's a good frequency though. See, I'm telling you, it's like a habit, you can't stop. Okay, very good. Now, let's add some more variation to the streaks by going back into the particles group here, and changing the opacity random to 50, uh, 100, yeah, 100, that's good. And then going into the emitter group and changing the lifespan random to about 50. Okay, so that gives us a much more varied look and increase the overall lifespan to three. Of course, that will depend on how long your timeline is, but three will work well for me. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the motion of everything. So now I'm going to get fancy and make the title disintegrate. So to do that, let's just focus on the source title at the bottom. And I'm going to add the 2D particles effect. So it's an auto animating effect. You can adjust that by just turning down the speed. Turn it down to something just enough to make the title lose shape. Something like that is good. If you want bigger particles, just turn down the particle count like so, and you can even add custom shapes if you want. Uh, but squares will work well for me. I'll keep it at a thousand. And I'm going to go into options and animate the size so that they gradually disappear on their own. So the whole streak effect only takes about two seconds, so it seems like a good length for that animation. Nice. Now I know that I want to push this whole thing further up in my timeline. So I'm going to do that right now. Take these two, push them both up to about four seconds. And the reason I'm doing that now is because we have to pre-compose this text track for the particle emitter to see those changes. So I'm going to say warp particle is the new name of this track now. And check this out. Automatically updates with the new image. Very nice. We don't need to see that ever again. So now we can see our more or less end result for the warp. Um, there's actually a lot more particles there than I thought there would be, but that's fine. I'm going to compensate for that by just taking some of the saturation out of the colors. And that will help a lot. Yeah, looks better. I'll leave one really saturated one in there. Why not? Okay, next I want to get rid of these kind of parent particles here. Um, it's a cool look, you might like it, but I find it distracting in this effect. So what I'm going to do instead is animate the birth rate. So go into emitter. So right at the start of your whole thing, set the birth rate to zero. Create a keyframe. Go one frame later and boost it back up to whatever you need it to be. I zoom in here and select that keyframe. So I think we're at like 400 or something. Yep. And I'm a little late with this whole thing. So put them both up a frame. And that's it.
Okay, zoom back out. So now we're going to get fancy. <laughs> That's right, now we're going to get fancy. So what we're going to do first is add a lens flare to the particle streak. So just lens flare 3D, also a BCC effect, right on top of the particles. Make sure that also uses the comp camera. And I'm going to load a preset, bright star with light fog. We're going to get rid of the fog. And come down here, get rid of the chromatic aberration. Next, I want to change the stripe angle, set that to zero. And the length doesn't have to be quite so big, like so. I also don't care much for glows and disks, so we're going to turn all those off. All right, next, we're going to reposition the flare. So go into built in, push the Z all the way out. That will pretty much make it line up with where the particles are going. You might have to adjust some Y or X space, but that works well for me. And then animate the global scale. So of course we want to start it at zero. And you gotta kind of feel it when it seems like it would be really hitting that warp drive. Uh, I think as soon as you see the white really appear is a good time and then have the lens flare slowly fade out. And you can always just go back in and adjust the keyframes once you create them, like so. Okay, now one thing you may have noticed is that the particles seem to get cut off um, at about there. And you can adjust that in the global settings parameter, just something I forgot to do earlier, the far clip plane adjust, turn that way up. 6,000 should be enough for the distance my particles are going. Ah, and now we can see the lens flare doesn't quite line up where I put it, so shame on me. All right, so go back in, push that down until it does line up. There it goes. Okay, so we have that set up. Now let's animate the camera so it does something more interesting. Uh, we're going to start it totally neutral maybe do a rotation and pan on the title create some keyframes there go further down to right before this zoom happens angle it back down zoom it back out and maybe down again another angle okay good now right before the warp hits, we're going to do a really quick zoom in, zoom out, or actually a zoom out, zoom in. So that's where the warp hits. So we're going to adjust our distance here to create a keyframe. But right before it, we're going to zoom way out and shorten up those keyframes so that it happens over a couple frames really helps give that sense of something quick happening. Very nice touch. Okay, now let's add a keyframe for the end of the animation, which I'll say will be about here. So let's have this change angle completely, maybe rotate a bit like so, and we can zoom out again. Nice. Now we don't want that title hanging around after it's supposedly gone into hyperspace. So just shorten that track up so that it disappears about when the trails appear, right there. And to heighten the sense that it's going to do something dramatic, we're going to add a film glow to the whole scene so that the title warms up and then blasts off. So that's going to be BCC film glow to the adjustment layer. And I create a keyframe about a second before it goes off with no glow at all, zero intensity, zero radius. And then right before it gets really intense, like that's good. And then kind of like how the camera went out really quickly and then zoomed in, we're going to do the same thing with the glow. So really boost the intensity and the radius. Go a couple frames before it. Make sure it's not as intense or bright then. That's good. 
And then as soon as the trails start coming in, make sure you turn it down or you won't be able to see anything. So it will look nice if we have a slight glow on our trails though. So don't put it off completely. Maybe increase the glow threshold to soften everything up a bit. It also does a nice little touch to the lens flare. But like everything else in this effect, we can taper it off to zero over time. And the last thing we're going to add to the scene are the stars. So again, that's going to be its own track, a new solid, call it stars. I'm going to put it beneath everything, and I'm going to use BCC Particle Array to create those stars. And this time I'm just going to cheat and use a preset that I made earlier. I called it Half Sphere of Stars. The only thing I have to do is say Use Comp Camera. And don't worry, I will attach this preset to the project that goes with this tutorial, so you can use it as well. So just going through to make sure the stars look good at all the camera angles. It looks like we missed them out a little bit there. Going into global settings, I use the clip here too. I can check that it's not just clipping. So what I want to do is increase the size of the array uh, just to make sure it's appropriate. And it is. So let's check the rendered result. Okay, and there we have it. A movie-inspired Star Trek warp effect, all with BCC filters and After Effects. So if you liked what you saw here and want to try it on your own, you can actually download the project and a free trial version of our software at our website. And that's at BorisFX.com.